My dad's house has progressively got worse. My God, Ange, are you ready for this? I can't actually get in. Let's get another look what's upstairs. I don't want to go upstairs. This is going to keep us busy for a while. Be careful, please. Yeah, straight down to the cellar. Oh, my God. What, half a metre of water in there? Full of stagnant water, basically. You know, he said that it was bad but it, it is worse than I thought. In the upmarket London suburb of Barnet is a house that is crumbling under the weight of its hoard. This three-bedroom semi is owned by the hoarder dad of sisters Caroline and Eloise. It's a hoard of epic proportions. The kitchen is on the verge of collapse. The living room is full to the brim. And the bedrooms are jam-packed. This is the home that my dad bought after my parents divorced 30 years ago. So my dad did hoard when in our family home when we were growing up, um, which, was a <laughs> which was a bit of a problem. Bits falling around everywhere. And uh, we did find that quite difficult when we were growing up. This is the old piano that used to be in our house at home. Nearly as old as Dad. Oh, yeah. 1939. My dad last lived here seven years ago. He's 81 now, so he just found... He was worried about falling over, and the, the mess was so much that he couldn't actually get moved between parts of the house. Some of the electricity has gone, the water's gone. Uh, I don't think there's any gas, and he, he can't even reach the cooker anymore, so it, it, it all came to a head. It was decided the house was unfit to live in, and for his own safety, Dad went into a care home. I'd like anything that can be used to be used and not, to, not chucked away, because I don't like to see things wasted. By the same token, a lot of the stuff in here has come from Skips originally, hasn't it? So I don't feel too bad about putting it back into Skips again. That's true. They've been putting off clearing the house, but have now reached a point where they need help towards Dad's care costs. So, I think we're going to have to sell it. They won't have far to look for a buyer, because the next-door neighbours are interested. We moved in about 12 years ago, um, and we live next door to Caroline and Eloise's uh, dad. Unfortunately, it's been vandalised, so that, someone's that, thrown a brick through the window. and the fire a few years ago. And then there was the fire. We were actually He was clearing away. his garden, and he lit a... Uh, a bonfire to burn the garden rubbish. And there were gas canisters, there were 13 shopping trolleys. It was full to the brim of stuff. Yeah. Um, there were paint pots. Paint the paint pots. pots were exploding. Yeah. This was once one house, but was split into two. Caroline and Eloise's dad has the back half, and neighbours Emily and Kevin have the front. Ideally, we'd love to join the, the two houses back again. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be lovely, yeah, because absolutely. Because, you know, just the we'd, character of the house We'd certainly beautiful. want to, to look at it. It's going to be a mammoth job, so the two sisters have sent out an SOS to fellow sisters and expert cleaners, Ange and Yvonne, also known as the Dust Demons. What lies beneath? It'd be really boring if we went in and everything was hoarded and organised and labelled up. I'd rather it just be absolutely everywhere and we get to delve through everything. You know what they say, Yvonne? Be careful what you wish for. Can we get in? I'm coming to declutter, not do the gardening. The other side of it, though, is it's somebody's home and it's somebody's life and we're sort of invading their privacy, but things have got too much, it needs to be sorted, it's got to be done. A little bit overgrown. Hiya. Hi, lady. How are you doing? Here sister. to help. <laughs> it needs help by the looks of things. Watch out. Just stand on the ladder. Literally. Yeah. I'll hold on here. Yeah, That's good fine. plan. Can we actually get in? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Ange. You know, when we say things don't shock us, are you ready for this? I can't actually get in. Oh, my God. Blimey. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, 
wow. Okay, this is going to keep us busy for a while. This is the kitchen of some description. No, this not is a functioning kitchen. No. Yeah, there's a microwave there and a sink, so this, this and a is, fridge. This is not a kitchen. This is like where I go and take my rubbish on a Saturday afternoon. And for cobwebs. Oh my god. Wow. They, they have got to be the biggest cobwebs They're like hammocks. I've seen in 22 years. Oh my life, Angela. Little writing sets. Just jars of sweets everywhere. It's like sweets. Yeah, mint, old mint imperials. Let's get another look what's upstairs. I don't want to go upstairs. Where are the stairs? Here, but there's no banisters, so be very really? careful. Really? Looking around, he actually was a very organised... A very tidy writing as well. I can't write that neatly. Staple remover, ruler. All... It's just like being left in time, hasn't it? What do you think? What do you think? I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is on as Yvonne and Ange only have three days to clear out the biggest hoard of their careers. Have you seen one like that before? If I'm really honest, ladies, it's one of the worst. Coming up, the dangers of hoarding. It's only as dangerous as I am. I'm just to be careful not to have another fire. I suppose I'm a bit dangerous. And hoarding that runs in the family. It's Which just happens? a wee bit stressful. Which bit? All having it done, and then you find mouse droppings, and mm. and that's a bit disgusting. Barnet, North London, and Yvonne and Ange are suiting up to clear out the biggest hoard of their careers. All right, we've got to make that walkway safe. Right. The plan is to clear the house so Caroline and Eloise can sell it to pay for their dad's care home. This is a first, having to make the actual entrance safe before we can even get in. And with the hoarder himself off site, the dust demons can crack on with no interruptions. Does that fall on you? No, I knew it was going to go. First off, the kitchen. I'm doing well, ladies. Where Dad has given the go-ahead for everything to be skipped. Probably just get through stuff quite quickly once we get started. This under here is really weak. I'm just hoping that when we clear this away, all this doesn't just fall through into the cellar. She's hoping. It's not just Caroline and Eloise that are happy to see the back of the hoard. Living next door to a hoarder is no fun. We did have an issue with um, one of our party walls, which was crumbling, um, because we had, had ivy growing up the wall and it was causing damp to come into our house. But it's not just a wall that Emily and Kevin are sharing with next door. But we do have also a shared cellar, so we have the entrance to the cellar, uh, which unfortunately is underwater, um, partly, par partially underwater. We have tried emptying it out. Um, but it fills up again by the next day. So we are assuming that it's a bigger cellar in next door, which must be underwater as well, because we don't understand why ours keeps filling up. And then the other concern is the fact that we think we've got a mice infestation. Just as the clean next door is gathering momentum. Even the tins have corroded. Oh my God. Listen. Oh, Ange puts her foot in it. Literally. Oh, my God. Man, be I know. We're going to have to put something across this. This is... That's, I knew that was all going to go. Look at that. That's dangerous. It can see it's all wet down there. You've cleared everything off the top of the boiler, you can see. Mm -hmm. Yes. And our foot has gone through the floor, yeah. literally. I've shined a light down and you can see right down into the bottom of the cellar and it does look wet and muddy and... The thing is, the whole of the kitchen is falling oh, in I here, isn't it? It's falling okay, into yeah. this bit, so I'm a bit worried about when we start moving this stuff. All of this is falling forward, so this floor is going like that. I think there's a big bow under here. As soon as I trod on that bit there, because that was piled high of stuff, but as soon as I cleared it and trod on it, my foot went through. The whole clearance is now in jeopardy. 
You know, he said that it was bad, but it, it is worse than I thought. Yeah, there was a sense of relief that it was starting getting done. I felt like, oh, something's being done, it's going to get done, it's going to get done, and now obviously this is a, a setback. Big setback. With the entire house out of bounds, the clearance is at a standstill until a structural engineer can do a survey. So we've had to come out, we can't carry on. Job abandoned, I'm devastated. Rochester, Kent, home to hoarding duo 60-year-old Judy and her 32-year-old daughter, Melissa. This is our house and we've lived here about 20 years. She's my carer and I love her to death and um, she does all the things that I can't do when I can't do it. They've overcome some serious medical challenges together. I had um, an MRI scan of my brain, which showed a four by six centimetre brain tumour on the left hand side of my brain. And now I'm like partially paralysed from the right knee down. You never know what's around the corner, so my motto is to take each day as it comes. Over the years, my mum's collected stuff or she's, or my dad has, it's too much. Before her illness, Judy was a full-time carer for her husband. Well, my late husband had multiple sclerosis. We lost him about 11 years ago. In September, my dad passed on the 3rd, and then in October, um, my granddad passed away. I'm trying to get over my dad and trying to get over my granddad, and then it's like, no, no, he was gone. So, I, so we lost three people that we really cared about. Yeah. As a consequence, their hoarding habits took over. Their three-bedroom bungalow is drowning in rubbish, crafts and DVDs. Yes, this is my mum's crafting table, as you can see. My mum used to be able to get to it, but because it's crumbed with loads of stuff that either I've put on there or my mum has, I just want it to look like a crafting table again so she can do what she loves again. And that's what I would like her to have, yes. Hoarding often runs in the family, and for Melissa, dealing with both her mum's illness and the loss of loved ones has meant she too has turned to hoarding. My bedroom is kind of like a bit messy because I need to kind of tidy it up a bit. It shouldn't, I shouldn't let it get built up like that, but yeah, I do. The house is so jam-packed, it's become a safety issue for them. You know, I wish I could move freely around this house without having to drive around an assault course. I don't like looking at it. I don't like seeing it. And I try to do what I can, but you know, there's probably too much for me to do on my own. Desperate for help, they've called in the professionals. You can see a skip on the drive, that's a good sign. Yeah. But this isn't the first time that the serial hoarders have crossed paths with Alison and Zoe, the declutter divas. Hello, Melissa. Hey, yeah. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And you? How long has it been? About 10 years. Wow. My goodness, how time flies, Melissa. Yeah, I know. And in those 10 years, things have gone from bad... What's going on? Oh. ..to worse. Can't even access her wardrobes. I recognise those boxes. I put those boxes up there. <laughs> what is that? Is that a I divider? Think it's, it's a divider. This must be her office area okay, then, so. yeah. I can remember organising these shelves, but there's a lot it more. It was in a here lot now. more. Boxes, boxes, yeah. More boxes. Yeah. Having cleared the home once before, the divas know this time they're going to have to get tough with Judy and Melissa. We've only got two days with you. We're up against it. It's a lot to do. Yeah. You know, the less clutter, the safer it is. There's more space. So, tough decisions for you two yeah. ladies tomorrow. Yeah. Sometimes people say, oh, yeah, that's fine, we're going to lose this, we're going to lose that. But actually, when it comes down to it, they're not quite as ready to let go as what they think. Are you as excited as we are? Yes, I am. Fabulous. Brilliant. Totally. Excellent. Excellent. I'm up for this. They talk a good talk, but you know. will they walk the walk? Exactly. Eighteen months ago in Huddersfield, 
we met 81-year-old Jake Mangle Wurzel. Welcome to the home of the king of the eccentrics. This is wonderful Wurzel land. A self-confessed hoarder with no plans to change. He's taken to living life way off the grid with his dog, Willie Wurzel. Well, I do have a few friends and guests, you know, so, so when they come round, I used to offer them a pot of tea and they used to look around and realise they were going to be poisoned or something, you know. So they'd always say, uh, no, Jakey, thank you, we just had one. <laughs> they always say, I've just had one. So, yeah, I've always been a hoarder. I just can't alter it. I cannot be clean and tidy. But his hoarding came at a heavy price when fire broke out. All the papers, it was absolutely full of papers. So once the first piece of paper caught fire, and then it was an inferno, yeah. That tempted fate all these years, and eventually fate well fucked me, you know. After not just one, but two fires destroyed his home, a fire prevention officer paid a visit. The structure at the moment uh, is quite dangerous. It's loose and needs to be pulled down. We've got a very old gas oven uh, with a lot of uh, papers, documents in very close proximity. I am an expert on fires myself because I've had two major ones, yeah. The dangers from smoking in bed is, is very, very serious. You're going to lose your caravan if there's a fire. You're going to lose the structures on the outside of the caravan if there's a fire. So there is potential for it to affect the, the residences uh, on, on the surrounding area as well. And from now on, I must take more care. I've got to do, otherwise it'll be fire number three. So, 18 months on, has Jake changed his ways? Thank you. Welcome again to wonderful Wurzelland. Oh, well, in ordinary terms, a lot worse, because I've been stacking up, stacking up. Outside my perimeter, it's actually encroaching onto the playing fields because I can't get it on my own land. Some of it, it has a definite purpose, and I think, oh, it'll just do for that. But some of it, it has no special purpose. I just think if I get that into stock, it will come in useful. For instance, there's four wheelbarrows out there and one under the worktop, and I gave one to a pal. So, six wheelbarrows. Who needs six wheelbarrows? His caravan is still drowning in rubbish. And he's even built an extension to house more discarded items that he's collected. Yeah, I've been very busy. I decided to restore this, which was com completely consumed by fire. And so I put a new roof and I'm just putting the windows round. This is my brand new stove that's working very well and the smoke was out of there. And so that's going to be my washing water for one of my rare washers. That's fairly clean sky water. That's so I'll get free tea out of that one. How dangerous is it now? It's only as dangerous as I am. I suppose I'm a bit dangerous. Yes, I'm just to be careful not to have another fire. But living this way is starting to take its toll on Jake. It's the agony and the ecstasy. I have enormous ecstasy through building, creating and doing this, that and the other. But the agony is living in a shit pile, you know, that I seem unable to fix. And now Jake has enlisted the help of willing accomplice, Connor. When you first meet Jake, he's a bit jarring, but he's well worth getting to know. I mean, he collects all sorts, but he's sharp, he's on it, and uh, he's got a lot to offer everyone. I met Connor, he saw me in the paper, and he, he just thought, this fellow sounds interesting. He volunteered to help me, and so he takes Willie for a Willie walk like three times a week, and then he helps me with any heavy lifting, and he's begging me, to tidy it out so that it's, it's a proper living abode once again. I mean, the place is like, a, is like one big memory, a good memory. It's a shame how, it's, a shame how it's ended up, but it's, it's good that we've got it still. I mean, the council want to get rid of it. We're not going to let them do that. They're the baddies. 
and where the good is. Battles with the local council, battles with the police, battles with this, battles with that, battles, battles, battles. Why the fuck won't they leave me alone? Meanwhile, in Kent, the time has come for mother and daughter hoarders, Judy and Melissa, to say goodbye to their mountain of mess. I'm slightly nervous, but I think it'll be all right. It'll be absolutely fine. We're in the hands of the divas. <laughs> Alison and Zoe, the decluttered divas, have arrived. And because they've already cleared this house 10 years ago, this time round, they mean business. Are you up for this? Are you going to be really good? I'm going to be firm with you today. Absolutely. Yes, we want to get a really good result. Climb back that bedroom, Judy, today and get your sorted as well, Melissa. So, going to get cracking now. But first things first, there's something unpleasant in the air. We've got to sort out about this cat litter tray, haven't we? Yes, we have. I think the smell is, is getting to me now. So, do you think we could change it, yes? You just take the... You've just left. Right. Oh, there's loads of pee in it as well. There's a lot of liquid in here, though, look. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to take this outside. Oh, excuse me. Right, let's get rid of this. Well, that's a lot fresher now, isn't it? Yeah. Let the work commence. <laughs> Next, they tackle Judy's hoard of soft toys. What about the Smurf? She can stay on like the Smurf. Right, OK. I like him. Right. My parents bought me that. It's a slow start. Oh, my goodness. Right, what about this one? I like that one too. But soon enough, Judy starts to let go. That one can go, surely. Yeah, that one can go. Okay. Well done. Well done. Is that your name? I don't use that handbag, but it's lovely look. Mum, Mum just went to the echo. It's going. Well no, done, Well Judy. done. And there's no room for sentiment. That was a bear that Jimmy Osmond took into the jungle. Yeah, you can when go. He went in. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. But just as the clean gathers momentum. Yeah, I like that t-shirt. Right. Yeah. Is that gonna fit you though? Possibly. Okay, that's fine. There's another unpleasant surprise. Oh, I don't know, what's that? Oh no, that droppings. Mouse droppings have been found in the bedroom. Oh gross. And it's all getting a bit too much for Judy. It's just a wee bit stressful. Which bit's all special? having it done, and then you find mouse droppings, and mm. and that's a bit disgusting. That's well, horrible to think you've been sleeping in there. Well, you know, all, yes, isn't it? I mean, there was just so much stuff in there. There's no way you would have known. No. Yes. no. Making decisions is tiring. Yeah. And stressful. You get so used to and set in your ways in a cluttered house. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you go out and you don't want to come home to it. Coming up, Jake's up to his old tricks. They're all freebies or so. I just see things, arrange to pick them up and pfft, away. And the house in Barnet has some unwanted guests. Huge mouse den down here. Ugh. In Barnet, North London, everything has ground to a halt. The kitchen floor has given way under the immense weight of the hoard. Structural engineer Graham has arrived to assess whether it's safe for the clearance to continue or if the whole house is at risk of collapse. The kitchen's in the process of being cleared and the ladies, when they were cleaning all the stuff out, the, door start, the floor started to cave in. OK. Um, there's also a hole where one of them has put the foot through. Okay, doke. Another thing to bear in mind is that there was a fire here a few years ago and they used a lot of water and it was never really drained properly, so we think perhaps a lot of the moisture, moisture went into, into the wood and that probably is the reason okay. uh, it's not stable. And also around the property, you might notice there's some other ceilings that have caved. Well, there's some water in the cellar. Crack on the joist here. Timber is really not in good condition. Joists seem OK, but the floorboards are not great. Really, I need to see what the, the structure is and then look at the condition of the, uh, the main joists. 
the cellar. Now Graham has access to the cellar, he can see whether the whole building needs to be closed off or if the clearance can continue. I mean, there's what, half a metre of water in there? Full of stagnant water, basically. Well, obviously we've, um, we've managed to look underneath the, underneath the floor. A couple of joists at the front are OK, they're fairly new, but further back the joists have split. Um, and uh, it's completely unsafe. So nobody will be able to go into this particular room. At the moment, this is going to be out of bounds. It's not looking, uh, not looking great. With the kitchen condemned, Graham assesses the front of the house. This floor's quite solid. Finally, there's some good news. So you find in the ground floor room and upstairs, but obviously not into the kitchen there. Well, we can see that the, the main joists have split. There's definitely a problem in there, so that is, it's unsafe to walk on. All that rubbish has been on top of it, but nobody's been walking on it. We've disturbed it. That's why Foot your foot's through, gone yeah. through. So I think it was a good job you called somebody out to have a look at it. Although they've been given the go-ahead, Yvonne and Ange now only have two days left to get the house cleared. Structural engineer confirmed everything's fine for us to carry on, didn't he? And we've just got to go through the other door now. Kitchen completely out of bounds, we're not allowed in there at all. But we're a day behind. Day behind now, so we've really Wonder got to... women, wonder women to the task. We, we... need to be wonder women to the task, <laughs> Over in Huddersfield, 82-year-old Jake's quest to rebuild his burnt-down home is well underway. He's seen some windows from a house clearance. And Connor, who's supposed to be putting Jake back on the right path, is looking more like a partner in crime. Yes, they're still there. Praise the Lord, yeah. Yep. Now nah, then, I'm not good at reversing with a trailer on, so... Oh, shit. Oh, So we've just backed into a delivery man. Do you, uh, is it all right with these? Is anyone living here? Uh, well, it's been restored. And I have asked the owner, I've asked the owner for these, so we're not stealing. In passing, I noticed these two perfectly good discarded double glazed window frames, which I can use in the rebuilding of all my buildings at home. They're all freebies, and so I just see things, arrange to pick them up and pfft, away. I would have taken a chance on it, but I am well known in Huddersfield, for me honesty, you know. I only, I only steal things when I'm not likely to be caught. And my dream is one day to finish up with my house, outside and inside, Fairly tidy. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, this is a bit heavy. We checked and he did have permission, honestly. No joke, this last winter it was really freezing and I did feel a little bit sorry for myself. All my water was frozen up, two inches of ice on top of me, on top of all my water, so I had to smash it up to get at my water for a pot of tea. When I'm dead, they'll just have to get rid of the stuff that's not useful. In fact, when I think about it, they'll probably want to get rid of everything, but they won't get rid of me. Connor has begged me to tidy it and he's going to help me with it. And I think sometime this summer we will make an improvement, yes. In Barnet, it's day two of the clearance, and the pressure is on for Yvonne and Ange, who are now a day behind schedule. Our best laid plans yesterday have all gone to pot. We're not actually going to be clearing the kitchen now because it has been declared unsafe. So we're going to concentrate on the main living area downstairs and then all of upstairs. Ooh. Here, I'll get round the door. First up, the living room. 
And today, Caroline and daughter Ruby are here to help. Right, ladies, how are we doing? Digging I feel our... like we're getting somewhere today. <laughs> we really do. We're stuck Digging in. our way through We've now. We've got a corner. We can see carpet, which is always so positive. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm feeling really, really happy today. We're going to smash this. I know we are. Is there anything you want us specifically to look out for at all? Well, my dad says that his mother's uh, Rolex watch from the 1930s is in this room somewhere in amongst some watches and over there he said there's a stamp collection that his father bought uh, before I was born so he's quite interested in that they might have some value we're gonna do our utmost we'll find them for you oh completely rubbish look at that you thought it was something exciting there that's old phone cards what phone cards look no way so, Dad used to go around London checking all the phones for phone cards and he, he never paid for a call because people <laughs> always used to leave money on cards and leave them in the machine and he had free phone calls. <laughs> They've probably all got money on them. Phone cards aren't the only thing they unearth that has some value. There it is. You got it? Yeah. It's, yeah, we found it yeah. amongst all of this. It's amazing. Oh, the lost watch then Dad's stamp collection. Yes. Is that the stamp? It's a stamp collection. A look at that, you found them. 1845. That was 176 years. That's no, 176 really. years. Oh, that's amazing. No. Haven't you? Bought you? I think these need to go to an expert, really, to see um, yeah. what they're worth, yeah? Yeah? It's an afternoon of discoveries. Mm. Is that a battery? But not all of them are pleasant. Well, this is a huge mouse den down here. Ugh. They've been living here for some years. It's all under this massive pile of carrier bags. This That's is all, all they bags. Chewed up. And look, they've just chewed all the plastic. Making all the beds. Oh, that really smells. It's been a busy and productive day. All this out of one room. And there's still about another 50 bags at least in there. It's like the TARDIS. It, it, you start in a corner and a mound and it's just gone on forever. Yeah, there's gone on got forever. to be three van loads here from one living room. I actually feel like getting on this bike now. Still haven't finished. No, we've still got another 20 days work to do <laughs> in one day. <laughs> We're off. Bye. In Kent, it's day two of cereal hoarders Judy and Melissa's clean. And Zoe and Alison are playing catch-up. We've got quite a few challenges ahead of us. I think the last room is going to be the most difficult because there's a lot of attachment in there. Judy really wants a craft room. There's an awful lot in there, but she does really need to get rid of some if she's going to want that as a craft room. With so much left to do, they've brought in reinforcements. Hayley. First up, they tackle Melissa's messy bedroom. Is that working, yeah? Yeah. Looks better, doesn't it? Well done. Next is Judy's would-be craft room, which is full to the brim. We have definitely got a bit of a job on our hands. And the divas will need to convince Judy to start parting with some of her hoard if they stand any chance of getting it cleared. So, Judy. Even though we've taken some of the big stuff out, there's an awful lot up yeah. there. OK. And you really want to get that into a craft room, so yeah. you really need to come up yes. and make some decisions about getting rid of some of that stuff. Okay. Yeah? Fab. Fab, fab, fab. Right, bag for books. But with Alison and Zoe at full stretch, it seems Judy is up to her old tricks. Nutribullet? Nutribullet can go, yeah. Now nah, that can stay. Why? I happen to have a Nutribullet. But luckily, Melissa is on hand to keep the momentum going. Right, the biggest loser cookbook. No, you can go. No. Weight Watchers family favourites. No. The Hairy Bikers. I don't want it, no. Members favourites. No. And what's for dinner meal ideas. No. Oh, bloody hell. I think we're up against it. Well, there's just so much in here, it's fast. I think we're just trying to, yeah. Point. The hours are ticking by and we've still got a hell of a lot to do, haven't we, Alison? We have. I think we're going to get Judy in. Come on, Judy! Come into, the, into our craft room. Hello. Hello. 
Hi there. We've got rid of a lot, but we still got a lot. Yeah. So more decisions from you. Yeah. Yeah. The pressure may be on, but there's always time for reliving some memories. A little muff or a hat. Looks like a fascinator or a hat, does it? Wedding hat, is that your? Oh, that was my wedding hat. Was it? Wait, Come on, show us what it looks like. Probably not really yours now. Oh, I don't know. Oh, look, we've got the muff to go with it. Yeah. Oh, look, is that nice and warm? Yeah, it's quite nostalgic. Remembering the day. This used to have a flower or something on it. In. But it um, went mouldy. We know it was a fresh thing. So we took that off. But look, see, if I was in what, the other... So what time of year did you get married? My late father's birthday was on the... Um, 17th January, and me and Robin got married on the 18th. Do you miss him? Yeah, I do, actually. Mm. How long has he been gone? About 11 years. Yeah? Yep. And then it's just left you and Melissa here, so it must be very hard. Yeah, it is. And you never thought of meeting anybody else in the time? No. No, not, um... No. Sometimes I think who needs a man. <laughs> Back in Barnet, it's the final day of the clean. Oh, God. <laughs> uh huh. Mm, that's a lot of stuff. And with a day lost because of the disaster in the kitchen, both Caroline and Eloise are on site to help. And they've found a shortcut for clearing the bedroom. Go, one, two, three, go. Oh, my God, go. Oh, oh. That's so satisfying. Oh, my God, look at you, how fast you two've done it. <laughs> we'll get the last of this bag, Dot. Children's shoe yeah. there. Who's going up there? Oh, you kids. What I mean is, don't stand on it. I won't stand on it. Can't get this open. Oh, sorry, sorry, foot. Coming up, have Yvonne and Ange managed to clear the biggest hoard of their careers? Oh my god. And have Alison and Zoe finally given Judy the craft room she desires? I'm hoping you're going to think it's wow. Wow. In Kent, the declutter divas are making the final push to bring Judy and Melissa's hoard under control. Oh, it's an apron, I think. Serious, Serious. about sausage. <laughs> that's going, that's going. Well, I think you've done really well here. A room verging on being a biohazard is now a safe, clean place for Judy to sleep. Oh, my God. What do you think? You sure this is my bedroom? You're a couple of geniuses. <laughs> the chaos in Melissa's bedroom is now under control. What do you wow, think? It looks incredible. And the craft room that wasn't fit for purpose is now somewhere Judy can while away the hours. I'm hoping you're going to think it's wow. Wow. Well. Incredible. That's amazing. Come on through. It hasn't looked like that for I don't know how long. So it's been great working with you ladies again. Yes, you two are incredible what you do. And when you're doing an amazing job, and I just want to say thank you. Oh, oh absolutely. Yes, thank, thank you really. very much, ladies. Yeah. Nice for us to hear that we're doing the right job. It's lovely. We're, it's we're lovely doing, to hear that. Because we right. do try yeah. really hard. Oh, oh. No, it's because, yeah. <laughs> you're happy. Oh, well, bless you. It's been lovely seeing you again, Incredibly Mrs. lovely people. We did sleep before. We'll try not to this time. Won't we? Yeah, well, yeah, all right, all right, yes. I'm over the moon and absolutely overwhelmed. It does feel like I've got my house back.
Despite all the odds being stacked against them, Yvonne and Ange have transformed the hoarded house in Barnet. First on site to check on progress is Eloise. Oh my God. The deluge, dark and dingy lounge is now spotless, spacious and light. Oh, it's so, it's great. It's, it's lovely to see it like this. I've actually had dreams about this room being like this. Um, it's nice not to have all the clutter and, um, yeah, to have a lot of space and, and air in the room. The bedrooms that were bursting at the seams are now clear and ready to go on the market. Well, we couldn't see from one side oh. a few days ago, could we? Oh this actually goodness. looks nice, this looks almost. Nice. <laughs> Did you know there was a carpet underneath all of that? No, I didn't know there was such dramatic wallpaper either, <laughs> strangely. <laughs> I never thought we'd actually clear it. <laughs> There's a lot of junk in here before. Yeah, but we got there. I was shattered, but elated. I think it's gone well, hasn't it? We've left two happy sisters. It was... A mammoth task. Absolutely. That really was the biggest amount of possessions I've removed well, from a property. Well, it was 30 years worth. Yeah. It was 30 years worth without a doubt. I don't, I don't think we would have been able to do it. We wouldn't have been able to do it. We had, I had ideas about doing it. Yes. But nobody dreamed that there would be that much stuff compacted in there. It's a huge relief, isn't it, knowing that the house is empty. I mean, I can't, I don't think I'm quite ready to accept it. <laughs> No, we need to, I need to process it a bit. I need to process, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's really good to be able to close a chapter. And now it's time for a new chapter to begin. The sisters are keen to find out how much the house might be worth. And with houses on this street fetching over £500,000, if their kitchen hasn't relocated to the basement, they've called in local property expert, Henry Pryor. Hi Caroline. Hey. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Looking forward to having a look round. Yeah, please come have a look. Thanks. Wow. I did not expect it to look like this. So much space in here, isn't there? It's a nice big room. And a bit of light. Mm. And some good ventilation. <laughs> Obviously needs a bit of work doing to it, but uh, really impressive. So we had a little bit of a problem in that the floor of the kitchen went down. Disappeared, right. One of the joists is split in half and the joists either side of it are not that strong either. Wow, yeah. So it's a really nice garden, closed, in, secure. South facing. South facing. The biggest problem for this house is that it's probably unmortgageable and therefore you rule out anybody who might need to borrow money to buy it and then to improve it and put it back into its state of original glory but it really depends on how many people are 100% cash buyers. At about 300, 350,000 pounds, I'd be surprised if it doesn't make a little bit more, given the fact that lots of people would like a project. Righty ho, that's not too bad. Could be worse. Could be worse, yes. <laughs> Taking all that stuff out of my dad's house has, um, was, was quite emotional, and I think the best thing to do would be to, for him as well, be nice, clear, quick sale if we can. It does feel like a nice way to end this story. <laughs> Next time. It's not like other people's houses. It was lovely when we moved in. It's all my stuff. It gives me comfort. <sighs> it's a pain in the neck, it really is. Thank you.